Hello, welcome to this lecture on resistance and DC circuits. So the contents of this lecture is primarily taken from this source here. So electronics, a systems approach by Neil Storey. So you can see the contents of today's lecture. So resistance and Ohm's law, so this is building on lecture one. Power dissipation in resistors, resistors in series and parallel, and then finally resistive potential dividers. So in terms of the key learning points, after this lecture, you will be able to understand the following. So the effect of resistance and how this relates to Ohm's law and the corresponding properties. So how the following properties, length and area and resistivity of a um, conductor, how that relates to the resistance and also Ohm's law. How to determine the power dissipation in resistors, the effect of resistors in series and parallel, and how the current and voltage are determined. So the two different configurations, resistors in series and parallel, and how you determine the, the current and voltage. And then finally, the use of the resistive potential divider to vary the magnitude of a voltage across two resistors. So it's effectively two resistors in series. You have a voltage drop between those two resistors, and that voltage drop can be used to um, effectively to power a component or a load. It could be a DC motor um, or light source, whatever. So if we're looking at resistance and Ohm's law, so just as a recap from the previous um, lecture, you should recall that effectively Ohm's law was given by this, where I here denotes your current is equal to V, which is your voltage, over your resistance. This can obviously be rearranged into these following formats here, following forms. Um, the unit of resistance, just to be aware, just to recap you, is ohms. So resistance in a conductor occurs due to collisions between the electronics and fixed charges. In most materials, and the case that you can see here, so for a linear or ohmic material, so i.e. most metals and ceramics, you can see here as the voltage and current has increased, they are increasing um, at a constant rate. Okay, that's in most materials, and this here, because it says ohmic material, this here complies to Ohm's law. Some materials, though, for example, semiconductors, um, they are non ohmic materials, so they don't effectively comply to Ohm's law, so you can't really use Ohm's law when you get this sort of relationship. And you can see here that as the voltage and current increase, they're not increasing at a constant rate. There's this known as this non linear relationship that occurs here. So if we consider a uniform component, as you can see here, we have a cross-sectional area denoted A. So you see denoted A here for this cross-sectional area here. And that unit of that is meter squared and a length denoted L. So a length of the component denoted L. So this is our resistance here. And you can obviously see I've compared this here to a resistor. So the overall resistance R of a device is directly proportional to the length. So that might be obvious. So the resistance is proportional to the length of this um, component here. I can also tell you that if you double the cross-sectional area to 2A, so we go from A to 2A, this has the same effect of effectively putting two um, components here or two resistors in parallel. So if we were to put another kind of um, resistor over here, it would have the same effect okay as doubling the area 2a here so connecting resistors in parallel reduces the overall resistance okay and again you might expect that therefore increasing the cross-sectional area of a device or a uh, component also reduces its resistance with this given by this so here you can see here where the resistance is directly proportional to one over the area Therefore, this relationship occurs where we've got the resistance here is directly proportional to the length over the area. OK, and it's kind of a relationship that maybe appears obvious and you can you can see that. So just to summarize, the following relationship occurs. So double the resistance. So if we want to double the resistance, 
we can effectively double the length of this component. Or if we want to half the resistance, we can do this by doubling the area. On the previous slide, we've spoken about the effect of area and length of a component on the resistance. Now what I'm going to introduce you to is the effect of material resistivity on the circuit resistance. So previously you saw the equation R is equal to L over A. Now what I'm going to introduce you to is this constant of proportionality in this relationship termed the resistivity of the material. So it's denoted by this symbol here, rho, and it's got units of ohms a meter. So what we can obviously do is rearrange equation five to make this rho term here for the resistivity the subject, where it's obviously equal to the resistance multiplied by the area and length of the component. Different materials have different resistivity values. So again, if we're looking at equation back at equation five, we can see obviously if we were to use different um, material and have a different resistivity value, what we'd end up with is a different value for the resistance. As you can see in the second column here, the resistivity at zero degrees Celsius, ohms a meter, changes for the different materials. So if we're looking again at equation five, if we want to obviously have a component with reduced um, resistance, we might want to use gold conductors in comparison to maybe, for example, using a lead conductor. OK, because it's obviously got a smaller value, so it will result in a, a, a smaller value for the resistance. The flow of current for a resistor. So we've spoken there about kind of um, about just generally resistance and resistivity. Now, if we just talk a bit more about resistors. So the flow of current for a resistor produces heat and um, this this causes the temperature of the resistor to rise. The resistance of most materials does change with temperature and an increase in the temperature can result in damage to the resistor. But it's likely not from an external source, but it's perhaps from providing the resistor with too much power. And we'll talk more about power on the next slide. So any particular component does have a power rating and it should not be kind of exceeded or else you could lead um, resulting damage in the resistor. So as to be expected, large components have a greater surface area and can dissipate more, um, well, can dissipate heat more effectively. So normally they obviously have a greater power rating. A resistor might handle one eighth or one quarter of a watt, whilst larger components might handle several watts. So on the previous slide, we spoke about power. So now what I'm going to talk about is power dissipation in resistors. So if we recall from the previous lecture, so equation two, where power effective is equal to the current multiplied by the voltage. So it's the product of the voltage across the resistor and the current passing through it. So what we can do is we can use V is equal to IR which is effectively Ohm's law, and we can substitute that into this equation here. So what we'll end up is power is equal to I, substitute obviously IR into V, so in brackets here IR. This I here is going to multiply by this I here, and we're going to get this squared relationship here. Alternatively, we can substitute um, I is equal to V over R, again, which is Ohm's law, into equation 7, to give the following. So P is equal to, in this case, I is just V over R. So you can see V over R here multiplied by V here. Because we've got two Vs here for the voltage, it's gonna be V squared over R. So what I've given you there is just three different forms to represent power. As an example, so example one here, what I've got here is a circuit diagram. So I've effectively got here my DC power source and I've got three resistors here. So what I want to do is determine the power dissipation in resistor R3. So R3 here, so this resistor effect here in the following circuit, and here we've got a current value, uh, the current um, passing um, through that resistor as well. So the resistor value is 50 ohms, and the current value is three amps. 
So straight away, you're probably thinking, well, if I want to work out the power, I've got current, I've got resistance. So I'm probably going to use equation 8. So if I use equation 8, you can see here, what I effectively do is to substitute in the value for current, which is just 3, 3 squared, the resistance, which is 50. And then you can see here, I get my um, solution here. Whereas if you recall from the lecture 1, the units of power being the watt. So in this case, it's 450 watts. What we're now going to consider is resistors in series and parallel. So the effective resistance here are of a number of resistors in series. So in series, you can see here, it's just effectively, um, here you've got obviously your connection here, and you've got obviously your resistor here, R1, R2, R3, R4, and obviously in general form, R subscript N. So the effective resistance of a number of resistors in series as this form given here is equal to the sum of their individual resistance and this is given by this here so you effectively just sum up the resistance the resistor values to give you the the effective resistance so as an example here so example two determine the equivalent resistance the following combination so this is nice and straightforward because all it effectively is doing in this example is all you have to do is just sum up these four resistors here so using obviously the above formula, where in this case, this capital N here is four. So it's just R is equal to R1, R2 plus R3 plus R4. Sum them up together. And then we get there the effective resistance of these four resistors in series is 70 ohms. Now, if we can consider the resistors in parallel, the effective resistance of a number of resistors in parallel is given by this equation here. And you can see here the form of the resistors in the parallel here, where you've got R1, R2, R3, and R4. So here we've got our four resistors. This is the equation here given in general form. So this equation here effectively represents what's going on down here. 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And then because this is in general notation plus 1 over Rn, but in the case below, it would be 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. So you can see here the resistors compact, effectively connected up um, using here, which should be wires, in parallel. So as an example here, what I want to do is determine the equivalent resistance of the following combination. So a nice simple example to start because I've just got here two resistors in parallel. So I've got R1 and R2. R1 is 10 ohms and R2 is 20 ohms. So if you use the above equation, so obviously because capital N is just 2, all we need to do is do 1 over R is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, which is just going to be equal to 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20. If you obviously work out that, it's going to give you 3 over 20. Then, obviously, because we know that 1 over R is equal to 3 over 20, all we effectively do is just flip around the equations. Therefore, 20 over 3 is equal to R. So in this case, the resistance is 6.67 ohms. When you're doing these um, calculations, a good kind of check is to check that this value here is actually lower than the resistance values of the original resistors. So the effective resistance, so we've just determined here, of obviously these two resistors in parallel, um, the effective resistance of a number of resistors in parallel will always be less than that of the lowest value resistor. So this value here for the effective resistance will always be lower than each one of these resistors that was originally in this configuration. So if we're continuing on the topic of resistors in series and parallel, what we're going to do now is look into a little bit more detail in terms of the effect of the current and the voltage. So you can see this arrangement given here where we've effectively here got a supply voltage and we've got three resistors in um, series. And obviously we've got a current that goes through. Um, so the arrangement is given where a voltage denoted A is applied across the resistors. 
The voltage across each individual resistor, resistor is created by the product of the current and the resistance. So basically you would expect that based on Ohm's law. So the voltage here, in this case here, is equal to the current multiplied by resistor 1 plus the current, the current uh, multiplied by R2. And then you can see here, I'm just using the general notation, we've got I, R subscript N. Again, obviously the jagged line here for the general notation. So what you can do is, because obviously I is here, is common for each one of these, what we can do is put I outside of the brackets here and have the resistor terms inside the brackets and then just have it is equal to IR, as you would originally get, where R is just equal to effectively the sum of the resistor terms. So i.e. the circuit behaves like a series of resistors replaced by a single resistor equal to their sum. When several resistors are connected in series, the current flowing through each resistor is the same. So that's a very important point to, to make sure you're aware of. So the, the current will be the same through each one of these resistors. So what we want to do is determine the voltage for a given circuit. So in this case, you see here the voltage is here. What we've got is the current, as I said, is the same here. And we've got the three resistor terms for resistor 1, 100 ohms, resistor 2, 200 ohms, resistor 3, 150 ohms. So what we effectively do is just use equation, well, equation, I'm going to just look at equation 13. So if we do V is equal to I, where well, in this case I is 10 milliamps, and then effectively the sum of the resistor terms, which is just 100, 200, 150. Work that out and you'll get 4.5 volts. So effectively the voltage that's, that's given here is 4.5 volts. So now if we go one step further and we consider the case for the parallel circuits, so where we're again considering the current and the voltage, so here we've got several resistors connected in parallel. Again, the general notations used in, again, in this equation here, we can see the current is equal to the voltage over R, Ri plus the voltage over R2 plus, and then you can see the general notation here, where it's R subscript capital M. V is equal to, uh, sorry, I is equal to, because here you can see we've got U common here. So what we can do is move V outside of these brackets, create some brackets, put V outside, and then just have 1 over R, R1 plus 1 over R2 plus etc. And again, likewise, what we can do is just simplify this and just have I is equal to V over 1 over R, where effectively 1 over R is just the, the, um, the familiar form that you used to, well, which is effectively just given here. So what we've got is an example here. So in this example, determine the current for the given circuit. So you can see here the potential difference or the voltage is, is, is five. The resistor one is 100 ohms and the resistor two is 200 ohms. So what we wanna do is determine the current for the given circuit. So what we're gonna do is use um, this, well, effectively uh, this equation here, so equation six, 16 and what we're doing here the current is equal to v where v is 5 volts and then over effectively the sum of well not the sum of but the 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200 for these resistors so it's 5 multiplied by effectively the sum of this which is 0 0.015 so the current that is in this given circuit is 0 0.075 or 75 milli amps. So what I'm going to talk about now is resistive potential dividers. So these are introduced to effectively vary the magnitude of a voltage at a point between two resistors. So what I've got here is three resistors in parallel. I've got the voltage across these resistors and then here I've got the um, effectively the voltage that's been supplied. So the voltage across these resistors what we might want to do is, for example, 
if this I don't know this of high voltage this voltage was I don't know 10 volts it might be that we want a voltage drop between these two resistors to be lower than that because we might want to supply a I don't know a given load that has a kind of a, a rating or a, or a, or a suggested load of uh, or well a suggested rating of maybe five volts so maybe a DC motor um, so it might be that we're powering different components um, so just to look now a little bit more in terms of the mathematics so the voltage across each resistor here so R1 R2 is given by the current multiplied by the resistance so for example if we're just first of all looking at the voltage one so this voltage here is equal to the current multiplied by the resistor one okay which is equal to the voltage over effectively the sum of the three resistors multiplied by the resistor subscript one to the first resistor and this is equal to v um, effectively r1 and then the sum of the resistors here okay because as you can see effectively all i've done is just move the v outside here and then just multiply the r1 above here so therefore the fraction of the total voltage across each resistor is equal to the fraction of the total resistance where the following are given so for example here we've got v1 over v because you can see here whereby we've got v1 v so v1 if we just divide by v is going to give us this here so v1 divided by v we get v1 over v and then we're just going to have then r1 and then over the sum of the resistors and then likewise the same relationship occurs with v2 um, when we're considering the voltage 2 and obviously this just becomes r2 and then v3 here where this just becomes r3 or rearranging the following to give the to give to give these 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 three equations here where you can see these equations can be used obviously subject to knowing the voltage here and the three resistors we can determine v1 v2 and v3 as introducing equations 18 to 20 so these equations just introduced so we've introduced those equations we can also work determine the current so if you're looking at this equation here so if you look at this equation here if we were to effectively just divide by r1 so r1 here so obviously if we divide both sides by r1 that's going to disappear that's going to disappear so we're going to end up with i is equal to v over effectively the sum of the three resistors to determine the voltage so if we want to determine the voltage at between for example here between two resistors we can do so with this um, equation here where you can see um, here is determine the voltage we've got here v1 and v2 so the voltage at these two points so it's v2 plus v1 minus v2 and then r2 which is just resistor 2 over r1 plus r2 so what i've got here is an example whereby we want to determine the voltage in the following circuit so effectively we want to determine what the voltage drop is between these two resistors subject to obviously you can see here 10 volts here and zero volts here and resistor one of 200 ohms and resistor two of 300 ohms so based on the above so using this equation here that we just derived well not derived just um just went through using this equation here where effectively you can see here r2 is zero so it's gonna be zero r1 is 10 so it's just gonna be zero plus 10 minus zero r2 is 300 and r1 is 200 so then if we just work out that we'll end up with six volts so we know here that this voltage here well in this particular case actually sorry i was going to wrote it there it here is going to be equal to six volts so initially here you can see the voltage here um, is 10 volts and having these two these two resistors in series we've created this voltage drop here of six volts what i have here is a dc motor and gearbox model it's a virtual model it's effectively a mathematical representation of a dc motor so a direct current motor 
that you can see here with the gearbox. Um, this has been created using something known as Simscape. Simscape sits within a software package known as MATLAB. You might have heard of MATLAB, you might have heard of MATLAB and Simulink, but Simscape is where this has been developed and it's effectively a package within the MATLAB package, if that makes sense. So what, I'm, what I've used this for is because I want to demonstrate effectively the resistive potential divider being used. So here you can see here you've got your resistor, which was which given a value of 200 ohms. This one here has been given a value of um, 300 ohms. And here we've got the DC voltage source, which was given a value of 10 volts. So you don't need to worry too much about the configuration all the on all the accessories and the digits with this. The only thing you really got to understand is the resistive potential divider that I've used. So it's got a power source, it's got two resistors. And then what I've done here is I've um, fed off a, um, effectively a signal or what would be a, a wire in real life and this here we would expect to give us a value of 6 volts given the previous calculations that we did. To be able to measure that using the Simscape package what, we, what I need to add is a voltage sensor and then what you can see is here I've effectively tapped off, well you can see here this 6 volts here has been provided to the voltage sensor the voltage here is going to the DC motor and it's also being fed to this display such that I can read what the voltage is being supplied to this DC motor. Okay, you can see here it's just to complete the circuit as well, so the negative is going back to this circuit. Um, so when I actually run the simulation, so you'll see here the DC motor here just spinning around, it just spins around for five seconds. So that's being supplied with five volts sorry, six volts for effectively five seconds. The reading here is as you expected. So it's six volts. So it's six, so that's a value of six. And what you can see there is I've effectively configured a um, resistive potential divider to be able to create that voltage drop between the two resistors so I can provide the DC motor with the desired um, voltage. So obviously I avoid things such as over kind of burdening the, the DC motor and eventually maybe um, breaking it. The virtual motor, it's developed by Brian Hong. And you can see obviously a reference here to the, to the virtual lab. So in summary, the effect of resistance has been detailed, i.e. how the length, the area and the resistivity affects the resistance. Okay, so the resistance is, is, is well, the resistance of material. The resi resistivity is based on um, things such as you know, the length and the area and also the type of material that you use, i.e. like maybe gold, tin, lead, etc. It has been detailed how to determine the power dissipation in resistors. So we've introduced you to those three different formulas where effectively you had the initial formula which um, was given and then we substituted in Ohm's law. It has been determined how resistors can be placed in series and parallel to effectively alter the circuit and how that kind of configuration affects the current and the voltage of that circuit. A resistive potential divider has been introduced and I've used an example um, i.e. the DC motor where it's used to effectively to create that voltage drop between two um, resistors in series such that we can effectively alter the voltage um, at any point in the circuit to perhaps so such that we can provide a source of power to multiple components within the circuit. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.